what started as a best of seven series has now been converted to a virtual best of three. And credit goes to Daniel DiPonso and the rest of the Beermen for tying the series two games apiece. Filipinas, magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat and welcome to Game 5 of the 2010-2011 PBA Philippine Cup Finals between Token Tex and San Miguel here at the Big Dome. At kami pong inyong courtside duo, Chiki Ray is here with my partner, Dominic Uy. Well, good evening all you PBA fans. Gaya nga nang sinabi mo, Chiki, they had two guys who came in Games 3 and 4. Pero itong Token Tex naman, wala yung dalawang big men nila, Kelly Williams and Ali Peek. They need to show up if they want to have a chance in getting this title. So, tingnan natin. Sino ba ang mag-show up in tonight's ballgame? Kaya ang tanong po natin ngayon, will the missing men of Token Tex finally show up to stop the bleeding? Or will San Miguel go for a three-game winning streak and give their team captain his 10th ring before he retires? It's the Token Tex Chopang Textures versus the San Miguel Beermen. The San Miguel Beermen tie the series. Back in business, and they feel that the pressure is now on Talking Tech. So it has become a highly emotional series. Washington with a second chance basket. We're lazy defense! We could have picked that up! The momentum goes right back to San Miguel. Here's Kabagdot, two seconds to go in the quarter. Kabagdot off the glass, it's good! A spin around, Walter Tani! I would stop this for three. Yes, go! How will Bucket Dex respond? Hey, be patient, make the work on me! Be patient! La Pog finds a three. Yes, sir! It is Castro for three. A big one in the goals! Ryan Reyes off the ball! Look at this strike. They're trying to get back in this. Special mention to the two Dannys who I played with for the longest time. Let's make one more run. And it starts tonight. I want to end my career with the championship with your help. Ryan Reyes says he's focused on these finals games and he's mentally prepared for battle. Ryan says he just wants to thank everyone for the support and prayers. He is dedicating the series to his brother. Ryan Reyes with a flip it. I mean, he, was, he came out of nowhere, but he's hurt. You cannot put a price on that effort. There's a sea of red and a sea of yellow. The intensity is definitely in the air here today. Numbers lie, but the will to win tells the truth. The crowd is ready. Welcome to the Big Dome with 13 championships to his name and 21 years of PBA experience. This man that's joining us here at Portside has pretty much seen it all. Right now we are joined by Coach Tim Cole who can better help us understand and appreciate the gravity of Game 5. But before that, Coach Tim, i got to ask, how's Alaska's preparation for the upcoming conference? Well, I tell you right now, every one of my players would rather be here tonight playing in this game tonight. There's nothing like the finals. and. Uh, uh, it never gets old, and so uh, uh, we're doing all right. We had a little wrench thrown into our plans when our import that we contracted a month ago got measured over height, and uh, so we're scrambling around trying to find someone new, and that's always a hard thing to do this time of year, but uh, you know, we're, we, we got some sources, and we're doing our thing, and the players are just waiting to find out. But in the meantime, this is where it's all about, being right here, right now. That's right, being in the finals. So let's talk about just that, Coach Tim. The first two games obviously went to Talking Tech. Their offensive-minded game has really done fairly well for them. And then the next two games, everything just turned around. Let's talk about TNT's offense and San Miguel's defense. Well, you know, that's the question. Has it been TNT's offense or San Miguel's defense? I think it's been San Miguel's defense. Uh, you know, I was talking to my brother-in-law, you know, after the first two games, and he said, uh, you know, what's going on? Why is Talking Tech dominating? And I said, uh, I don't think San Miguel's really come out and made a game plan 
to stop the penetration, to stop the Jason Castro's, uh, Ryan Reyes's, and and that it, that opens up the whole court for them. So, uh, um, and since that time, in the last two games, it looks like Otto has really come out, made a decision to stop that penetration, and lo and behold, you can look at it and points in the paint, 54 points for Talking Tex in the first two games, only 34 in the last two games, and they people think of points in the paint as being rebounds or post up. Really, for Talk Tech, it's about penetration, getting to the basket. I gotta ask you, you are very close friends with Coach Trott. What do you think is going on in his mind right now? You've seen other teams come back from a 2 to nothing deficit. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I know Trott, and, and I know he, that he's having a flashback right now. When he was coaching this very team, San Miguel, he was up 2-0 to Inebra, and, uh, and they got swept four games in a row, and they never won that championship. And I remember talking to him about it, and he said, that's the one I'll never forget. And I tell you, he's thinking about that right now tonight. Well, one thing that they have to think about is one man who's on that demolition course. We're talking about Danny Ildefonso. He has been winning back-to-back -back games for San Miguel as a top player. Well, you know, Danny I has been the guy who's stepped up. He's been the man uh, that they've gone to the post with. You know, the, the, the weakness of the top attack defense is really their post-up defense. Ali Peak is too slow to really pick up on, that, on Danny. And uh, Dale Campo is not the, uh, it's, it's just a little bit undersized and not quick enough. So they've gone to Danny. And uh, I tell you, I've experienced that through the years. Back in the early 2000s, we used to put Sean Chambers on him. And Sean could not stop Danny I one-on-one. -on -one. So he's reliving that moment. And he's doing a great job. And he's leading this team right now. And that's why we want to show you vintage Danny I. After the first two games. Some have written up the San Miguel Beermen being old, weary, and unable to keep in step with a young and running Doc and Tex dropping Texters. But not so fast. It took one ageless warrior to fire them up. Special mention to the two Dannys who I played with for the longest time. I want to end my career with the championship with your help. Former two-time MVP Daniel DeFonso took his comrade's challenge to heart and the hands of time turned back in the next two games. Vintage Danny I led the Beerman's demolition job of the Texters. Daniel DeFonso has made some magical shots tonight. Pick up the buck the buck foot, shaking and take a nice pass! An excellent pass for Daniel DeFonso! Daniel DeFonso hitting those big shots and he's loving it. Pinayak kasi ako ni Olsen yung sinabi niya eh. Susubukan ko ulit. So, tsaka yung playing time na binibigay sa akin ni Coach Ato, napakaganda. Kaya sabi ko sa sarili ko, sayang naman kung pakakawalan ko pa yung ganitong chance. Siguro na-inspire sa din sa sinabi ni Olsen, ano, na-challenge din sa nangyayari sa amin. Natuwa ko at ano, um, na-motivate ko siya. Because as a leader, I want to motivate my, my team as much as possible. And siguro nagawa ko yun with him. And I hope to do it with my other teammates as well. Because as a leader, yun ang, ang role ko. With a series now tied, going into the home stretch, it will all boil down to experience and hunger. And the seasoned warrior they call the Demolition Man had been into many wars to know winning time is fast ticking down. If the Beerman goes on to relive the glory days of the two Dannys and Olsen era at the turn of the century for one last time, the Demolition Man is a sentimental favorite to bring home the finals MVP. Hard to imagine Coach Tim that Danny won his back-to-back -back MVPs 10 years ago. But of course, he's showing that he can still be the demolition man that he was. How difficult was Danny I back then? Well, you know, Danny was a special player. And, you know, the guys like that, Danny I and, and the Albert Poppity Monios, they're, they're what we used to call, excuse the language, but they used to call match-up hell. You could never find a guy to match him up, man. If you look at his numbers right now, I think the key right here is his minutes have really gone up. And with his minutes, the points have gone up, field goal percentage, and let's make sure those rebounds and assists. So he's really, you know, give Coach Otto uh, a real lift. Uh, you know, give him credit. He has searched for someone to step in, and he has found somebody in Danny I. And uh, I, I just think it's fun to watch him come out and relive all that stuff he's been doing. Well, since you mentioned giving the team a lift, None has given this team a bigger lift than Olsen Rosella with that speech that he gave just a couple of days ago. That was the rara that they needed.
Talaga pag crunch time, si Danny ay pupunta ko. Alam ko na pag pinuntahan ko siya, he'll make the right decision. Ang akin, I will make the right decision to go to him. And anything other than that, alam ko, alam niya na ako anong gagawin eh. He'll make the right pass, he'll make a shot or get fouled. Mas during crunch, alam ko, may gagawin siyang maganda. Well, there you are. Alston Rosella really putting a lot of belief in Danny I and the rest of the team and looking for a turnaround. And Danny I was telling me, they listen to Alston Rosella's speech every single time. That and Freddie Mercury's We Are the Champion really gives their spirits a lift. How big is motivation and a motivation given by a team captain? Well, you know, I think that that comes from, you know, the respect that Alston has gotten throughout his career. The players really look up to him. And, and you always need a spark in the finals to really get you over the hump because there's very little that separates the two teams. So any little edge you can get, you go for. And uh, and, and they use an Olsen. And, and give Olsen again that, that kind of credit. He's doing it. Well, that's part of the sidewire of San Miguel. What about the sidewire within the Talking Tech squad? We had coach Chad Reyes just a couple of days ago after the last game talking about how he's filing a missing persons report after that game. And he's putting on the bulletin Williams and Pete, two players that have been missing. Kelly and Ali have taken a vacation. Akala yata nila tapos na. Tonight after game four, he said that Ryan Reyes returned being one of the people that missed in the past and gave a tremendous effort. But still, he's looking for Williams and Pete to find them. He's really hoping that these two guys will show up. We have no chance if those two do not. And of course, from our Twitter, a lot of people that we have asked via PBA on Solar TV reacted to this, just like Jeremy De La Cruz. He said, um, uh, Castro is now a marked man, so Talking Tags must find other offensive threats, perhaps Ali and Kelly, whom Trot has said was missing. And Alvin C. Villas tweets, do you think Kelly will explode this Game 5 and bring back that MVP form he had with Santa Lucia? And finally, we have Call Me Rock. Robert talking about K. Will and Pete needing to show up in Game 5, and he wants to see if Coach Trot will change his starting five. What is your take on that, Coach Tim Cole? You know, my take on that is that we have really intelligent fans. I mean, they have to come out and be able to Twitter that stuff. That's really smart stuff, and, uh, uh, but it's true. Uh, but, you know, those guys need to be active. They need to get to the boards. They need to be running on the floor. But for me also, I really think it comes down to the penetration of the guards. The guards need to create for those two guys. And that's what San Miguel is doing right now. They're really getting active. The guards are stopping penetration. And that prevented Ali and Kelly to go do their work on the board. Well, just to show you guys how serious their situation is, let's take a look at the man of mountain who has taken on a landslide from the best player of the conference candidate who's imposed his presence inside. Ali Peak is now a mountain with a huge landslide. Just take a look at his numbers right now. 2.5 in the past two games coming from a 9.5 average in the first two where they had one. And then let's go to the other side. We have an MVP from an MVP to an MIA. The machine gun definitely has not been as lethal and is now on TNT's most wanted list. Kelly Williams series averages have gone down to 5.5 points per ball game in 22.8 minutes of action. I mean, Coach Tim, these are huge numbers that they really have to make up for. No wonder Coach Trud has really singled them out. Yes, and they do. And, they, and Kelly especially has to get on the floor a little bit more. Um, you know, Trud is the kind of coach that will go with you if you're playing well. If you're, if you're not, he has enough talent that he can replace you. But at this point, in this importance of a game, I expect Kelly to go out and get his 35, 32 minutes and and really make an impact out there. And to see Ali go one for seven, I mean, that's unheard of. Ali is like always a nine for 11, eight for 11 type of, of shooter. So I expect him to get going and get around the basket. All right, well, we'll give you guys a situation after this break where we will have Miko Helene in the deed himself, Kenito Hanson breaking it down for us. Well, San Miguel and Talking Tech may be locked in each other's arms uh, for the moment, but that won't last long. By the end of this game, they will part ways. One team will lead uh, three games to two, and the other team, boy, so much pressure for them come uh, come Friday night. Magandang gabi po, Miko Alili kasama El Decano, Senor Kirito Henson, for game number five of the PBA Philippine Cup Finals, live on Solar TV. And, uh, well, Senor, <laughs> you know, they're tied, but... The, the, the 